Hello everyone and welcome to today's conversation about South African food and recipes. My name is Jessica and I'm the creator of Once Upon a Pesto. Today joining us is Kapano. She is in South Africa and her Instagram handle is at farming in a skirt. So if you have any questions or want to comment throughout this video, feel free to add her handle farming in a skirt to your question or comment and she would be more than happy to answer. Um, and we are looking forward to this conversation, first of all, because we share a connection for pesto, but also because South Africa is, is a amazing country and she is based in South Africa and so right now she's about seven hours ahead of us here in the east coast of the United States and she will be joining us here shortly and I see um, we have someone joining us here from Johannesburg so welcome thank you so much for joining today uh, so excited to have multiple people from South Africa in this conversation so very exciting thank you so much for joining and if you have any questions tag farming in a skirt in your comments and she would be more than happy to answer any questions um, and and that goes for after the video as well so very excited to get started here shortly talking about south african food and recipes with capano <laughs> All right, Kofano, hello. I'm so sorry about these technical difficulties this, today. Um, so excited to see you. You are um, amazing. I love all that you do on Instagram. So thank you for taking your time out of your evening today to talk with me about South African food and recipes. Thank you very much. I don't know if you can hear me, but my sound is a little bit low. So okay. I need to try and I don't know how I'm going to um okay can you hear me okay? oh, i'm not too sure pardon can you hear me okay? let me come a bit closer perhaps <laughs> or should maybe i should get earphones right um it's okay it, can you hear me like but you sound very far so okay. let me just double check Oh, God, I don't even know how to put this thing on mute. So you're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to just yeah, have yeah. to ask somebody for earphones. Itabi. Kupadi earphones. Thank you for everyone joining. Um, shortly here, Kobana is going to get headphones so she can hear us okay. Um, and then we will get started talking about South African oh. food and recipes. Um, very excited to have everyone joining us today. I know we have someone else from South Africa here. So welcome uh, wherever you are. It's very exciting to um, get together today and talk about South African food and recipes. So Kobana, can you hear us okay? Just say that again. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? It's crazy because I'm not. I'm. I'm not even hearing you through here. But I can hmm. just speak again. Can you hear me now? Mm. I think we'll have to. I think we'll have to make do with how I can hear you. I can hear you. It's a little bit faint. Okay. But it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, we'll get started here. Kapano, thank you so much for joining us. If um, you want to tell us about, you know, what, um, if you had to summarize South African food, what, what would you say about the food of, of your country? So it's a difficult one. So I don't even think one could start summarizing South African food. So you you can see I'm wearing a very bright shirt dress today because mm -hmm. I wanted to say 
our food is as diverse as our rainbow nation, as we're called. Um, so South Africa is so diverse. Um, so I will talk to some commonalities. But remember, we've got about 11 recognized cultures and languages. Wow. So that, and there's more of that. So th there's more, it's just that those are the official languages. And in each language, there are nuances that make up, you know, what we could call traditional food. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. It's a very diverse country. And if you move from one community to another, I mean, across the different racial groups, you'll find very different food. But, 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 you know, I, I, was, I try to think, and I was like, what, what perhaps can, can we say is a bit common for all of us? And I think the other day I shared a meal that I had, um, which was pap, what we call pap, which is a maize meal. Um, it's made out of maize. And it's a, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's our I would say like a staple starch, and often enough, even across different cultures. So another thing that's quite common is a braai. So, so, so I think in America you call it a barbecue. Yes. Um Because we even have something called um, on Heritage Day. There's another name for it. It's called National Braai Day. So I would I could safely say that somewhere, somehow, <laughs> you know, this whole brying, which is obviously the meat side of things, um, you know, it, it could, is possibly quite a commonality, even though, you know, across. And, and unfortunately, our country, I, I, I am going to talk race because we are structured like that. And, 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 and we would make uh, some separation, uh, you know, based on racial demographics and even cultural demographics. So, yeah, so do, 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 yeah, do, just understand the context for that. But mm -hmm. I would really say that maize pup is something that we eat just differently. So what you find is, for example, um, firstly, I would really say we eat a lot of meat, but we eat a lot of chicken. So the biggest meat that we do eat is chicken uh in fact even you know we can't keep up with poultry production because we eat so much chicken but followed by beef we are definitely a country that eats a lot of chicken and beef and then it will be how you then how people prepare it so you know if, if we talk let's say the indian cultures right they love curries and um so that there are certain provinces you'd go to in, in, in South Africa, like Durban, and you'd find a lot of that type of Asian uh, influence, spicy, very flavor, you know, lots of flavor, lots of color, uh, rich type of food. So curries is, 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 is what you would find in that part of the what of, part of town. Uh, you'd find that in the black communities, we, I mean, we love uh, meat, but and I think in economics we also grew up with a lot of vegetables and starch. So one of the meals I think I shared with you was a um, spinach and pap uh, meal. I mean, yes. it's my favorite, but I mean, Looked delicious. We grew up with lots of, and I think it was a, a, as I said, an economic thing where perhaps red meat was very expensive, chicken was mm -hmm. better, but our parents made a lot of savory vegetables so savory spinach like you were eating meat you know uh or savory cabbage like like a curry cabbage and 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 also i mean economically things like tin a lot of tin food and particularly i, I mean i recall pilchard fish it's mm. still a staple uh, but I think with, with, with the progression of the country and, you know, more of a middle class group growing, you know, we, that those things are not always what you'll find at every sort of household, but we grew up, mm -hmm. we definitely grew up uh, with that. And then um, on the African side of things, I mean, I had, I, I actually grew up in a neighborhood uh, that is very African um, from 94, but yeah. And they used to cook a poiki all the time, which is like a version of a stew. Okay. That like, 
like meat and vegetables all in like one pot. It sounds like poik, yeah. <laughs> it's all going <laughs> into that pot. And often enough, they would also have it with pap as the starch. So like I'm, I was saying, that, that it's quite diverse. And I mean, it even gets even more nuanced with every culture. But I think those are some of the things that definitely, you know, if you come to South Africa, you're going to find pap. You're going to probably, you, I would say, you want to have some pap. Um, but within, maybe let me pause and say, within the, 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 the 11, so within our cultures, right? So we've got kosas as an example. That staple is hemp and beans. So they call it mush. I don't think you'll be able to pronounce that, but it's hemp and beans. And it's, a, it's, it's really, it's, it's another dish that really signifies, it's, it's beans and hemp and it's delicious. Um, so wow. again, you can make it quite simple or you can make it quite savory where you also include meat in it when you prepare it um and then so my culture specifically so i'm Tuana, uh our staple as opposed to pap actually is ding so ding is like a sorghum mm. pap it's a, it's a brown it's a, it's, it's, it's a bit soury uh, and you could have it so in the morning we have it with sugar as porridge and then in the evenings you will have it uh, quite hard you let it you know harden and you have that with any savory meat whether it's a stew or just normal meat or vegetables so horses will have samp and beans Tuanas traditionally have ding which is that sorghum type of um, meal and well zulus pap. and then we also have something dumplings at, uh, so dumpling is a big thing uh, as well. And I think, I don't know who owns that, but <laughs> we love it. And typically you'll have that with the stew. And then actually there's an chakalaka. So I must tell you about chakalaka. So what chakalaka is, it's like a relish, right? It's a carrot um, relish, but it's, it's spicy. So you, it's carrot, green peppers, onion, curry, um, baked beans. And m most brides will have chakalaka. Uh, yeah, dumpling. So it's another, like, staple. If, if you're mm -hmm. cooking in most homes, whatever they're going to cook, there may be a potato salad or whatever, but chakalaka will always be there. So that's another thing. If you were to come here, you want to have pap, meat, chakalaka. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love the the name of it too. It's fun to say. Um, yeah, it's like boom shakalaka, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just fun. <laughs> yeah. And so, Kapano, tell us about you know the the flavors. We 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 talked about the meat and the different kind of uh, base ingredients, but what kind of beyond curry are the flavors that you'll find in South African food? You know, certain spices, certain herbs. Mm, I think that's that's also quite diverse because uh, typically I would say we do actually enjoy a lot of, um, I want to say chili or spicy food mm. because you, you get, there's the curries, right, that will take on that spicy uh, feel, but we also have condiments like acha. I don't know if you've ever heard of what acha is. It's like a it's like a mango pickle. Oh, <laughs> it's like a mango huh. pickle, but it's got lots of chilies in it, um, and 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 it's 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 spicy. It's like a sweet and sour plus chili type of taste. Wow. Um, but well. And on on the meats, you'll find a lot of barbecue. I don't mm. I don't particularly enjoy that because uh, I prefer more herbs in my in my in my food. But the, I think the flavors are quite broad. So you you'll find traditional food that's actually cooked quite simply. Actually, 
So if you are going and you're attending any traditional like event or ceremony, right? Mm -hmm. The food is quite basically cooked. Salt, pepper, pretty much. But in the sort of new age, then people usually add curries. So there's a spice called raja. And, and that's more like a, a curry, you know, type of, uh, uh, um, yeah, flavor, if I could say so. Um, I don't actually know if curries are the same everywhere. I'm just trying to think. <laughs> you know, when I say like a curry flavor, I, yeah. I don't know if it would be nuanced somewhere else. But generally, so it would move from that traditional simple treatment, which would almost emulate like back in the days when there wasn't too many sort of uh, retail spices available. And it would be like salt, pepper maybe type of thing. And then it would be quite spiced up. And then, of course, if you're going to sort of the Asian or Indian side of things, very oriental, um, very f fragrant, um, very colorful. So um, turmeric, coriander, um, I mean, rosemary, thyme, like you, you get a lot of like, yeah, it, it's quite flavorful. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But it's nuanced. It, it would depend on what you, it is that you're cooking. I don't think we have a typical, I don't think we've got a typical taste. It depends what you're cooking. But uh, lots of, I definitely think we are a spice and a, a chili nation. Because across the different cultures, you'll find a version, some form of chili condiment or, you know, spicy, uh, yeah, use, or, you know, some, some spicy tastes within the food, yeah. Great. And, and um, yeah. what, what about um, thinking, uh, you mentioned the pap for breakfast, kind of a sweeter, and then pap for dinner with savory. Um, what are the meals like in South Africa? You know, is dinner the, the biggest meal of the day? Mm, possibly lunch and dinner okay um i mean i think i think breakfast it depends i mean like you say we grew up where you'd either have a version of pap and it could be the white pap that i showed you mm -hmm. as porridge uh in the morning or like if you are Tswana, you're having ding as that porridge in the morning but i mean we're quite a remember we're quite a very you know the, most of the stuff you find in america in terms of you know cereals you'll also find here you find kellogg's and muesli but the traditional stuff is like that 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 porridge right in mm -hmm. the morning uh but sometimes people don't have time for that people are on the move driving i mean we've got traffic so sometimes people don't get to get they don't get to breakfast but lunches, I find that our lunches can be quite heavy. Okay. Um, so sometimes people will go the route of like street food for lunch mm -hmm. or takeaways for lunch. And, and, and generally it can be heavy unless you are a conscious, healthy eater. Um, so it will be sandwiches or people have, um, so fish and something you know whether it's fish and chips or a takeaway with fried chicken or there's something else uh, which is quite a local thing that you'll find in our townships kota so that's like a bunny chow um and and the kota if i could describe it is literally a kota loaf <laughs> that you scoop out the the you, you don't know, think of a quarter of the back part of a loaf right okay uh, and you and, and, and a, a bread loaf and you and you cut it and then the, there's the mid, soft bit in the middle which mm -hmm. you scoop out carefully and then you stuff the bread with different stuff uh, so it can be mince it started off like as a mince and mash curry mince and curry mash type of thing but mm -hmm. like now you'll have chips uh, you'll have sausages you'll have French poloni you'll you may have a bit of, um, you know, lettuce and lots of sauces. So it's quite, quite.
quite unhealthy, uh, but it, it's delicious. Mm. Oh, and something that I forgot to mention: fat cakes, maguing. That's what uh, it's another traditional food you'll find here, and typically it can be for be- for breakfast. So it's like deep fried. Uh, it's actually like donuts, but it's not donuts. Mm. So it's round, completely round. Uh-huh. It's similar version, similar dough, like donuts. And then you dunk them in um, it's very hot oil. And then that you will typically have either on its own or you'll have that with a uh, snook fish, which is a very salty like type of um, it's very small, but it's very salty because it's preserved like that. So you eat it you, like you have little bits of the snook fish with this uh, fat cook. Or some people will then do it, you know, with mints and stuff like that. Mm. But that's another like street food that people typically will have either at breakfast or during lunch. So okay. generally, if you want it at lunch, you're not going to find it because it's sold out in the, from the morning. <laughs> but those are some of the street foods. So you'll find a quarter in the townships, which is that very decadent, almost like a, a version of a dagwood, but, uh, you know, just something with lots of fillings, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost a, 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 a comfort food type of thing, but it's accessible and people will, will then buy that for lunch. Um, and then take typical takeaways, whether it's okay. your McDonald's, your KFC, or whatever. People will also go that route. And then for dinner, I'm finding that dinners are it, it's twofold. So you'll find families that um, believe in cooking, mm-hmm. but also there's a lot of you know young people who are working, um, and they will typically order takeaways. Uh, for for dinners, so you're finding that it's not always it's not we don't have a typical way of saying is it going to be a home cooked meal for dinner. Mm-hmm. I think typically that in families where there's children and stuff and people you know go that route. I mean, I lived when I lived alone in Cape Town for about eight years. I mostly ate out for for my dinners. So dinners for me as a young professional became less important than my lunch. And mm. I think it's still the case for, for, for young urban professionals. But for families, I think dinners are important. I think families take the time to cook. Um, and it makes sense, you know, you, you're cooking yeah. for other people versus if you really, you know, going to cook for yourself. I don't think there's lots of inspiration there. Yeah. But yeah. Right. That's awesome. And the, um, the idea of, you know, that, that kind of family, um, uh, centered mealtime, tell me, you know, what, it, what it was, what it's like to grow up in South Africa was, you know, were, were, did you get into the kitchen at a young age or was that something you kind of learned later on? No, you, you, you got into it quite early. So quite early when, yeah, I think as, as soon as you're tall, you're tall enough <laughs> to, to stand over the stove. Uh, and, and I think as soon as you, you, you know, you are, you can take instructions like don't burn yourself. <laughs> you start experimenting with cooking and it, and it starts with small things and it's like you're making yourself eggs for after school, you know, to, to, to make yourself a sandwich after school but you typically learn quite early uh, I think most parents back in my days anyway I mean I think children now are very spoiled <laughs> uh, most of you know uh, the children growing up there's nannies in homes but back then your mom would come back from work possibly late and you need to start learning how to cook uh, at a fairly early age, in, in your, in your, if you're not doing it below the eight, well, look, not cook, cook by ten, but definitely in your teens, okay. you need to, you you need to know how to cook, um, and and typically you'll learn how to cook whatever is being cooked at home, you know, mm-hmm. so you you learn by watching, 
um, you learn through getting, you know, instructions from, yeah, you, you know, your parents to say, okay, this is how you do this, whatever. And yep, you learn how to cook, to clean, and to wash your uniform quite early. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're you're responsible, you know, at an earlier age than than others. Yeah. No, I mean it was necessary. Um, and anyway, I think it, it, it a sense of responsibility. I think is something that certainly our parents took quite seriously. Um, and I think they saw it as a way of, you know, turning us into some responsible adults one day. Uh, who know what you know like there's a thing of when when the street lights go on outside you must go home because it means uh, because so my grand or my aunt would say so who's switching on the lights here you know in the house if you're in the streets when the lights are going on so it, that sense of responsibility definitely started very early great and do you have a, a favorite recipe that you make that you know one of your is you, you could call it your own specialty if it's, you know, whether it's one of the traditional dishes of in, in South Africa or something you've kind of made your own. Mm, so I would probably say I've got a three different tr favorites, right? So one is a traditional meal like the one I made. Okay. Really, I love spinach a lot uh, and pap. And, but also what's important. So another old thing that used to happen is that we used to kill our spinach. Like you'd, kill, you'd cook spinach for an hour. So traditionally our parents killed the food. If that, that's what I call it now, you know, because there will be spinach with potatoes. So they put the spinach first, then they put the potatoes. And then because the potatoes take long, yeah. your spinach is like gone. And then you mash everything at the end uh, so yeah, it was delicious, but I, I think all the nutrients were gone. So how I make my spinach now is literally my spinach must be done in fifteen to twenty minutes time. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll 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 put in some onions and into some oil, and then put some herbs in there and a bit of salt and pepper. But you know, cook them brown, um, and then. And then what else? And chili, definitely. I always add some fr like some dried chili in there, garlic, and then I throw in when when my onions are nice and soft and brown as well. Then I'll throw in my spinach. Okay. Um, I used to add some coconut oil, but um, I learned that coconut oil is not so great for you, so I don't do that anymore. Uh, it's not good for heart health. So I'm a I'm a I'm co I'm a conscious eater in that way. So I've stopped that, but it's quite delicious. I won't lie. Uh, so I think as a once-off, as a treat, you know, so it, it's that very, your spinach must be soft enough, but could be crisp. And it, 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 it sounds like a contradiction, but it should not be on the stove for an hour, basically, like we were taught. Uh, and then obviously your pup, but I'm now loving, so typically we'd have it with acha and now, I don't have acha anymore. I have it with pesto, my chili tomato Ooh. pesto, because it's always about just adding that spicy element to the meal, right? Like I was talking about earlier. So our chili tomato pesto, just one, it's a healthy alternative, but it goes so well with the spinach. It goes so well with the pup. And for me, as I think I keep saying, we, we value, you know, localizing these foreign concepts we need to own it we need to make it our own yeah so that that's one of my favorite recipes at the moment at home for christmas i'm called upon to make a dessert every year mm. um i don't even know how to describe this so it's <laughs> like um so another thing so on the dessert side maybe let me start on the dessert side yeah uh custard and malva pudding and ice cream is like you'll find that at almost every event you go to, okay? I don't know why, but it's at every event, but custard is a big thing here. Okay. And truffle, trifle, tri trifle, what do we call it? No, not trifle, like the oil. Um, it is, trifle. what's the truffle. truffle, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. A layered dessert, yes. yep. Yes, so that's also a thing. Mm, I don't, I don't really love it, especially <laughs> with the jelly and stuff, no. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, but it's a thing as well. So my my dessert, my Christmas dessert, the the one that my nieces, my brothers, everybody get upset with me if I don't cook it for Chris or make it for Christmas. It's a version of a truffle, but it's like a frozen. So it's a it's a bottom layer of. Do you know Mari biscuits? They're like, uh, okay, biscuits. I'll just, <laughs> I'm sure Mari's a local name. It's like these uh, biscuits. So you, you put a layer of that and then it's yogurt. Okay. Uh, so you can choose the type of flavor you're going for. So I sometimes go for the mixed uh, fruit yogurt um, or strawberry. And you do a layer of yogurt and you keep layering. So it's, bis it's yogurt, biscuits, and then mixed um fruit um mixed fruit in like um so it's canned mixed fruit uh okay. so it, it it's usually in like um a, a sugary syrupy like a uh, preserve like yeah liquid if i could call that so you do the the biscuits you do the yogurt you do the the, the mixed uh fruit you do that and then at the top, you decorate it uh, with the mixed fruits and the yogurt. Oh, and then at the top, you also add cream. Okay. Then you 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 also add peppermint chocolate Ooh. on top. So you, you've got these like two, two layers of this biscuit, uh, yogurt, and fruit, biscuit, yogurt, and fruit, and then cream, and then some chocolate with mint and then you freeze this okay put it in the freezer and then when you're going to serve it you'll serve it with ice cream and custard but then you cut it into little blocks so what you get is the colors of the biscuit mm -hmm. yogurt and the fruit coming through and then at the top you've got your cream and your and your what do you call your your peppermint so it's beautiful so it's beautiful visually but it's amazing wow Tastes amazing so that's my my secret not so secret uh, <laughs> dessert that i make and everybody asks me for the recipe and i say i can't give you the recipe because i mean i become redundant at christmas so. yeah. and <laughs> you know christmas uh, or do you make it throughout the year Actually, just for Christmas, it's the weirdest thing. I don't actually you make it any other time of the year. But for Christmas, my family looks forward to it. Oh. And I also really look forward to, 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 to making it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But, and what's my... I said there were three things I love to make. I've now forgotten what's the third thing. The, the spinach. Yeah. The it's, it's traditional. Dessert. And so is it stuff I love to make or is it stuff I like <laughs> to make? Maybe <laughs> or both. I'm trying to think. Well, I love to make pesto. So. Yeah. Tell us tell us about your, your pesto. So um, I love to, I definitely that. love to make pesto uh, that it's turned into a business, you know. Because it's it's interesting. So when when so I came when I moved into the food space, I came from a completely different space. I mean, my background is fashion, retail, and manufacturing, you know, and design, okay. not food at all. And then in 2019, after, yeah, going through, like, some hectic stuff, lots of losses in my life, I started urban, um, urban farming. So I literally turned half of our big yard into, like, yeah, a, a, a vegetable uh garden right uh planted lots of herbs but like i i googled a lot of like beneficial herbs like you know what it's good for and then i, I planted a lot of that and at the time high value crops and then i gradually moved into agro processing and funny enough so i was under pressure because somebody there was going to be a, a farmer's market and then they said so what products are you going to bring and then the first thing that came to my mind was I'm gonna make pesto <laughs> and literally I I sold out at that market and wow. sold out at the at the next market and the next market and the, literally and this thing just started 
saying, okay, you've got to make more of this thing. And since then, I've, I mean, experimented with a number of flavors. So right now we've got five flavors, but I mean, I'm sure we've now made up to about nine or 10 flavors over time. But yeah, so I adapt them. Sometimes you, 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 you start a recipe and you realize that, oh, it's a nightmare uh -huh. to, to, to keep making. So for example, I mean, uh, the red pepper pesto, oh, I loved it, but you have to peel the red pepper skin after roasting it. it. It was just a very long process. So I only do that on request. But obviously, you know, basil, pesto, mm -hmm. typical. But we, we've done our own homegrown flavors. So you, you hear me a lot talk about the chili tomato uh, uh, pesto. Yeah, it, it's, it's a secret ingredient. Uh, <laughs> so it's a secret recipe I won't really reveal but it's like the bomb and I right. think it's more the herbs that I add to it um, for, 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 for flavoring that really make it because obviously the typical elements uh, are there and, and I don't use pine nuts I use um, almonds Okay. so yeah, use almonds, uh, normal parmesan, obviously, the, 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 and a bit of basil. But the herbs that we use in there, I think it's what has everyone. I mean, I've got clients from Cape Town who are like, oh, my God, I'm daydreaming about this thing at work. Mm. Like, <laughs> so wow. it's crazy. And then typically, like, so, so I spoke about Morocco being a big thing, so which is spinach. So. So we have a, a, a pesto on as well that incorporates spinach in, yeah, I, I think one, because I love it. And I think, so all the stuff, I also try and think what's the value, what's the health promoting value of eating this thing. And, 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 and I, I am quite conscious that what we make should be delicious, should be natural and should have a health conscious um, you know, thought process towards mm -hmm. it because I think it's it's important that we eat our way to health and we don't medicate our way back to health. That's our philosophy. So, yeah, we 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 try and make sure you know we only use fine ingredients, extra virgin olive oil. Make sure that it's stuff that combined. You know, that that feeding your body. It's good for your heart. It's good for your brain. It's good for, I mean, I always say when you have our Morocco pesto, you've got like an immune booster mm. in one. You know, we've got, for example, oregano in there, the Morocco, which has also vitamin C. So by the time you are done eating that, uh, your immune system is like this. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I think those are my three favorite things to make traditional meals i don't know how to make all of them i make my mom make a lot of the other stuff i can't make uh my christmas my famous christmas dessert now you've got the recipe maybe you'll yes. try it out and then definitely the different flavors of pistols that we've we've experimented with over time and how how big is the, is your team making the pesto you know how many of are you working oh wow no it's a very small team <laughs> it's a team of two to three depending on okay. how oh, how how big the order is and 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 you're right it's a good question because the team needs to grow um mm -hmm. because the demand is much bigger than us you know uh but it, i think it's 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 a natural progression of a, a new and a small business you you, you, you bootstrap with what you have uh -huh. for the longest time and then you keep adding as, as, as you can afford to do so. But it's definitely one of those that if you, if you ask how big of a team do you need versus you know, the size of the <laughs> team you have, it will be a very different response. But you know what? We're doing well. We're growing. Um, and, and I think as we grow, I'm mindful that the team has to grow as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you've got to manage all resources on all sides. So, yeah. But, yeah. 
That's so great. And, you know, Campano, it was so neat that we connected through that shared interest in pesto and so great to hear how well you're doing with it and that that opportunity for growth that people just love what you make. So um, thank you for sharing that with others. It's so neat. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I mean, I think if there's a passion and a love for what you do, mm -hmm. um, I think that that really does spill over into the, the quality of what you produce. And, and I think that's what people experience. And, and, and uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, what do you call it? So in South Africa, there's a word, waza waza. It's almost like you've put a, a spell like on something, right? Uh, like or a love potion. Okay. So some people be like, hey, it's like you've put some waza waza in this place. So I'm like, no. The Oza Oza is only love and passion. It's the only type of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Oza Oza I can put in. But yeah, and I really think it's that for any, you know, food uh, entrepreneurs listening. I think when we do put in that, that's what people respond to. Yeah, definitely. And it's so such an inspiring story for you transitioning from the fashion industry to the food industry and just seeing that potential that, you know, you can do such a great work and create such great quality products too. So amazing. And Kapana, I want to give you this opportunity now to tell everyone who's watching, uh, where can we find more about what you do and follow along with your content? Okay, great. So they can follow us at Farming is, Farming in is Good uh, on Instagram. And we on our on our page, they'll find if they're within South Africa or Sub-Saharan, they can definitely order. And we do uh, Korea to 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 across South African metros. So they'll find our WhatsApp line to place our orders, and they'll find our email address. Our um, online shop is going to be up in probably the coming month, so they must look out for that. Yeah. It, so that that would be another great place to find out more about us. And then personally, they can follow me on uh, at Copano the Voice on Instagram, and they can keep you know in touch with the person behind the brand uh -huh. there. But they can definitely follow us, and I encourage them to follow us at Farming is Good on Instagram. Yeah. Great. Well, Kapana, this has been such such a great conversation. Love talking with you, getting to know more about the culture and the food. Uh, sounds delicious. I, I am a pest, or pesto and spinach lover as well. So uh, so, so neat to kind of learn how, how spinach plays a part in the South African cuisine. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. And um, I look forward to staying in touch and following along with the success of your pesto business. Thank you so much. And remember, when you come here, you want to have pap, fried meat, spinach, and chakalaka. That's all you need. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thanks, babe. And, Thank you so and much. And keep well and keep doing such great work as well. Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Have a blessed evening. Well, it's evening Thank for you. us. Have a blessed yes. day. Thank you so much. See you Cheers. soon. Bye. Bye.